Hi, this is David, and I just wanted to get on record. <laughs> Please. We're just here. <laughs> so, I know none of you can do anything for me, so it doesn't matter. It's not exactly what you think, but it is. Okay, it is. I don't want the Danites to know, so don't tell them, but we have a pool. And um, people get to use the pool. And the pool has a big sign on it that says what the rules of the pool are. And one of the rules says that um, if you're under 14, you need uh, an adult uh, to be with you. Well, I've got one daughter that's 14 and another one is almost 10, and they both are excellent swimmers. And uh, I've been sending them over there, assuming that the older child will watch the younger one, and she always does. And we've been over there all year, almost every day, all year. Well, <laughs> Today, my kids come home from the pool crying. You know, what happened? I said, oh, a guy kicked us out. I said, what guy kicked you out? I said, oh, big fat guy with red hair. I said, how fat? I said, a lot fatter than you. I go, jeez, that's a big boy. <laughs> so I take my two girls, and I go back over to the pool. And here's this one single soul. <laughs> three times the man I am with stupid looking red hair and he's swimming and I went over and I'm on the side of the pool and I'm saying you know what if you have problem with my children would you come and see me I don't want you talking to my children if you have an issue with that then take it up with the HOA oh. Dan Ice we're not in an HOA it's a no I just made that up well anyway he starts um, being belligerent and I, 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 because I know he's Mormon Mormons are not used to being talked to that way they don't know what to say when you're not in their state or state presidency meeting when you tell them you know shut up shut up mind your own business no one ever says that to them in the Mormon church so they're lost they're at an absolute loss of how to act and how to behave and so I told him I said you know what Stay out of my kids' faces. Don't talk to my kids. If you have a problem, you come and see me. So I grab my kids and I'm taking them by the hand and I'm walking away. So I'm starting to open up the first door of the clubhouse and I don't know how the hell he got out of the pool that quick to tell you the truth. I did see the wave. <laughs> it's like a tsunami that came through the clubhouse. So I thought maybe he was getting out. And so this son of a bitch climbs out of the pool and starts chasing me. Now, I got my kids and I'm halfway across the uh, clubhouse and I'm going out the other door. I'm just going home because I don't want to be around these Mormon crazy people. Well, he gets up and gets in my face and starts screaming, What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> I should have said, My temple name is Aaron. <laughs> so, but I did. I did. I, I said, You know what? You need to lose a little weight, a little less sandwiches, and I think you're going to be a happier man. Well, that went over like a turd in the punch bowl. <laughs> you don't tell Mormons that kind of crap. So anyway, he said, I'm going to call the police. I said, you can call whoever you want. Stay away from me and my girls. And if you have a problem, you're welcome to come over to my house and say, David, this is what's going on. Your little one is under 14, and uh, she doesn't belong in the pool without an adult, and your 14-year-old does not count as an adult. I listened to that, and I go, well, all right going to make a deal of it. It's okay. No one's ever made a deal of it. It's just this guy. Because see, this is what I'm telling you about Mormons. They're the most worthless, helpless, impotent people in the world. We have this sign up on the pool that says, Residents may enforce. Uh, when you say that to a Mormon, they're as happy as if they'd gone to the damn celestial kingdom with the whole 8th grade class girls. So now he's a policeman. He can enforce against a 14-year-old and uh, a 10-year-old. So, he decided to enforce. I don't mind people enforcing the rules. It's how they do it. If someone walks up to me and goes, courteously, this is my opinion, what I listen, then I evaluate it, I could agree, I may partially agree, or totally disagree. But when you get a 400-pound guy that you know is intimidating my 10 year old and my 14 year old girl, then I get upset 
So I went back over and uh, told him to leave my kids alone, and then he jumps out of the pool and chases me and thinks I'm going to be intimidated. I'm not intimidated. I told him, take less sandwiches, man. You're too fat. Good Lord, look at you. Well, he's not used to being spoken to that way. I am. I do videos. <laughs> so I was prepared. I was totally prepared. And then when he called me an ass, uh, now, you know, that's a big word for Mormons. Mormons don't say ass words. But he doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know what to do. If he would have come out of the pool the first time and said, well, you know, David, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you or your children. But your little one's not supposed to be over here unless she's um, 14 or more. And I was just trying to do that to protect the child and to um, make the place safe. Uh, next time, if you want, I'll be glad to come over to your place. I said, great, great. I shake his hand, pull his garments up over his head, and give him an atomic wedgie, and that's it. We're friends. We're friends. So this son of a bitch calls the police. <laughs> Jesus. Now, in my town, <laughs> you have to understand, I have lived uh, in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. And there was so much crying there when we called the police. I remember one night I called the police and I said, they're stripping my staff's car. It's right out in front of me. It's stripping. We'll be right there. <laughs> it was two hours. <laughs> they showed up and the car was stripped. And they took a report. Car was stripped. <laughs> so in most places, people arguing in a pool, <laughs> it's not police business. Well, in my town, it's big business. Big business. I better take this phone call because it might be the police. <laughs> Hello. Just a second, please. Allison, phone. So anyway, in my town, two fat guys, one with quad bypass surgery that couldn't throw a brick at anybody. What? The phone. Honey, they have to call back. Okay. So anyway, three police cars and four policemen came on to our private property and I guess the big boy said that um, I had committed a crime I guess a crime against nature because he was nature alright <laughs> nature at its worst all of you making fun of me this is how he was <laughs> so, God, he didn't intimidate the shit out of me and didn't intimidate me at all and I just told him get out of my face I'm going home and I don't care who you call Call the police. I don't care. So he did, and uh, they showed up, and uh, they were in force. <laughs> and I was in the pool with the kids. My baby girl's crying. She thinks I'm going to jail. <laughs> Usually she's right. Thank God she was wrong this time. So the police come out to me, and I'm holding the baby in the pool, and they go, Hey, you know, did you uh, intimidate that guy? And I opened my, my suit up, my shirt there, and I said, hey, do you see this scar on here? That's quad bypass surgery. I don't think there's too many heart patients that could pick that big tub of lard up and throw him anywhere. He said, well, he said you got in his face. I said, god dang, he's so big, you could be a half a mile away, and you'd be in his face. He said, well, he said you were pointing your finger. I said, oh, okay, that's what he said? He says, well, what is your side? I said, well, my side is I came out here and told him not to talk to my children, to stay away from them. And then I began to leave, and I went through the uh, first door of the clubhouse. I was almost out of the clubhouse on the other end, and this big tub of lard, I could feel the building shaking. <laughs> He's running after me. Now, in, I don't know, I know a little bit about the law. Okay, if a person is retreating, they are not being the aggressor. If a person is turning their back and running, they are not committing an assault in that position. If you're moving forward towards a person and you're getting in their face and you know you're doing one of these and the person becomes scared, it could be a quasi assault. So I guess that's what the police were there to try to figure out. Did I assault the fat man? Well, god dang, he's the one that got out of the pool. He's the one that chased me across the, the clubhouse. And when I turned around, his fat stomach was right there in his big ugly face. And he thought, you know, he's going to step forward and intimidate me. Well, I don't intimidate too easily. I'm an atheist. <laughs> Kill me. I don't care. <laughs> I know there's no Jesus when I meet people like this. <laughs> Good. That's, that's my testimony as an atheist. When I see the children of God, I go, Fuck. I don't want to be with the children of God. And this guy's a Mormon. You know damn well he's a Mormon. 
So the police listen to me, listen to him, and find and see. Usually, the person that tells the police first and calls the police has the advantage. Well, you know, I wasn't going to go out there and argue with with uh, you know the Pillsbury Doughboy. So when the police came in, they listened to my side of it and they said, well, you know, your your child is under 14 and it'd probably be a better idea if you're over here uh, when she's swimming. And I said, well, she's with her big sister. And so he said to the sister, he says, well, are you certified, qualified as a lifeguard? She goes, no. And he says, well, see, you know, who's going to, and he says, if, you, if I threw a 50-pound uh, stone in the water, could you, at the bottom, could you pick it up? <laughs> a lifeguard could not pick up a 50-pound stone from the bottom. It has to be a floating body. So and he said, well, see, she's not certified. And I said, no, she's not, but I, uh, she knows mouth-to-mouth -mouth and she knows CPR. And she does know uh, cross chest carry, and, and she has had practice doing that. Well, she's not certified. I, okay, she's not certified. I'm not going to argue with the police. He was trying to say, and what would he have said? Yes, I'm certified. Yes, I have a current certificate on me right now. Would he have said, okay, let the six or the nine year old in the pool? No, nah, he wouldn't have said that. So I just go, hey, hey, whatever makes them happy. So anyway, he takes out the little book. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something about Utah and the police. Now, maybe other states, I don't know. But once I was uh, parked in a handicapped line, not in the, the zone, and I have a sticker. I have a sticker, legal sticker to park in the handicapped, but I was on the line. And so the police showed up. <laughs> we don't have any crime in our area. I'm just really sorry. But the police have nothing to do. So he said, you're on the line. I go, yes, sir. Now, the other one's crowding me over. He says, well, and he pulls out the little book. He goes, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? I gave that all to him. Well, today he came to the pool. He's talking to me, and I wasn't being belligerent. I was just, you know, listening and listening to both sides of the story, but I wasn't going to let the fat man lie because, you know, that's all Mormons do is lie. I left the area. I was retreating. He was chasing me. And to say that I was intimidating him or assaulting him is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And he said to the policeman, well, he got in my face. <laughs> I couldn't tell where his face began and his stomach ended. I don't know. I was just like talking to the Berlin Wall. <laughs> And he's the one that stood up there to me. I just turned around and God, there's the Berlin Wall with a head on it. <laughs> so I told him, I said, you know, leave me and my family alone. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'm calling the police. What's your name? I, I don't have to give you my name. You're not the police. I'm calling the police. I said, fine, call. And sure enough, within, in an art town, 30 seconds, <laughs> three police cars, four guys all showed up. And uh, they're investigating this uh, assault of the Pillsbury Doughboy. So, I wanted to go on the video here in case the Mormons change their mind and they come and arrest me. I can say, look, I told the, in the entire world what the truth was. It's my truth, nothing but the truth, and I'm going to stick with it. That's my uh, story, and I'm sticking with it. And, you know, he made my little one cry, which just broke my heart, and my big one had her head down in her lap thinking I'm going to jail and I said no you know we haven't done anything it, this is a private matter in the HOA it's just that the uh, you know uh, uh, Willie the whale had <laughs> chased me through the building and thought that I was going to be intimidated give me my name give me my phone number and then he's going to tell the president and the state president and the HOA who's in his elders corner see that's the way these people are they're losers they're losers he could have said to me just like I said to the policeman Okay, I understand that. All right, it's a safety issue, and uh, I'll be glad to be here with her if, if that's it. I said, that uh, 14-year-old, uh, my other 14-year-old, I thought she was old enough to be taken care of. Just, Does she look like an adult? I was going to say, hell yes, have you seen her? <laughs> but I didn't. No, I don't do that to the police. I should, but then I'd be at Point of the Mountain and meeting Bubba. So anyway, I said, well... She she is qualified and able to take care of the baby, but if you feel it's better that I'm here, I'll be happy to be here. No problem. So he took my name and my number, 
and I don't know if he was going to call me for a date <laughs> or what. But anyway, I think they feed that into a computer, and if you're in there enough, they go, you know, this guy's a troublemaker, but he's going to go home, he's going to pull a rap sheet on me. I haven't had a ticket uh, in 30 years. <laughs> I haven't had a wreck. I have insurance. I've never been arrested. I've never taken drugs. And uh, I don't have marijuana or uh, reckless driving or, you know, uh, arrest, and then I was let go. I've never been arrested. So maybe, <laughs> maybe the red man's father is a highway patrol or the DA or something, and the big boy's going to show up at my door with his father. I'm telling you, Mormons, you are crazy, crazy people. It's not obeying the law. I believe in obeying the law. It's how you enforce it. If those policemen had come over to me and drawn their weapons and threw me down on the ground and handcuffed me, put their boot on the back of my neck and said, we're here to investigate the small child in the pool, that would have been inappropriate. And the Mormons can't draw the line. They're in a cult. The cult tells them where the line is. They have no common sense. If he had just spoken to me like an adult and said, gee, I didn't mean to offend you, and uh, gosh, give me your, your number and I'll be happy to give you a call or whatever, or I'll just report it to the HOA and we'll just deal with it that way. Okay. But to chase me out of the pool like Orca the Whale, and then, you know, I turn around and there's his fat ass. I couldn't tell if it was his stomach or his ass or his face. It all looked the same to me. But I'm not easily intimidated. And I just told him, leave my kids alone, leave my family alone. I'm leaving, and now he's coming after me. That is not me assaulting anybody. So anyway, the police took my name, and if I don't get a date, so what? That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Gotta love the Mormons. They never run out of shit to do.